So uh, next up we have a talk on using web torrents other than uh, <coughs> web torrent trackers for purpose of other than torrents. So this talk is by uh, Subin who is a very active member of OS community and has been contributing to a lot of projects. And interestingly this particular project that he's going to talk about came out of a hackathon that he built to use web torrent trackers for P2P uh, applications. And the library name is uh, P2PT, so he's going to talk about it. So please uh, give a warm welcome to Supin. Okay, so it was a bit of hurry because we were making this in the last minute, just hacking there. So uh, I'm going to talk about P2PT. So this is a, uh, this is a peer to peer, okay, how do you call it? Okay, this is like uh, to make apps, peer to peer apps using web torrent trackers as the signaling server. So I will explain what all those terms are. So. About me, I'm, my name is Subin. I volunteer for Sohantara Malayalam Computing, uh, Wikipedia, Debian, and okay, KD. I should have removed it. I kind of not active there, but I used to contribute to KD during doing the Malayalam localization. So I'm on Twitter at this handle and on Mastodon at Subin as 2000 at ana.site. Ana means uh, elephant in Malayalam. So some people was like, let's start a Mastodon server naming elephant because elephant is the mascot of Mastodon. So ana.site uh, is uh, active, uh, small 200 people in Malayalam. Uh, master on community and uh, it's invite only sorry okay so uh, I want to pl plug in force meet a bit here because this talk is actually a miniature version of a talk that happened in uh, February this year at NIT Calicut uh, in Kerala Kodi code so force meet I think there are NIT people here right there are the NIT people here yeah, yeah. so uh, NIT, this this force meet has been happening for 18 I think 18 is the correct number right I guess 2005 2004 somewhere it started then and uh, it, it's still continuing. Those good people from NIT, students from the NIT Calculator are doing this. Keep on doing it, I would say. It's a good conference. And uh, this talk is a smaller version of the talk at Forsmit. The original talk of this was like how to start open, starting contribution to open source. But I don't think that can be done in 15 minutes. So that's fine. Okay, so uh, what are the things in this going to be in this talk? So I will be explaining what WebTorrent is. The timer doesn't work? Okay, so. Where's the timer? Oh, okay, got it. So the web, how I will be explaining how web, oh, how will be explaining how web torrent works. Should I disconnect it again? Okay, so I'll be saying how WebTorrent works and the original talk, so this is the original slide, there was like a PR pull request that I made to WebTorrent. That was, uh, the original talk was about that, how to contribute. But then I'll be skipping that and we're talking about how the library, p 2 uh, is a JavaScript library using WebTorrent trackers as a signal for WebRTC web, web, web And I'll be uh, showing some apps built with P2PT. I think I will directly, okay, maybe start with the demo so that you know how it will work. So let's go to um, dots. So this is a game, this is Firefox, right? yeah. So this is a game that we used to play in school using paper. One person would draw a rectangle, no, draw a line, and uh, the person who gets the most rectangles would win the game. So this is called Poojam Vettu in Malayalam. Uh, let's start a hosted new game. Okay, a host new game. Oh, playing with a random person would be better. But there won't be anyone here, so it will be randomly matched with these two browsers here. So I will be have the browser on this side and the other browser on the other side. So this is the incognito window and this is the main window. So I'll be uh, clicking play with a random person and we'll be trying to find people. Okay. Torrent trackers are not there. Okay, different app then. So this is another app also using P2PT as uh, uh, the library. So you can see, yes, connected. So uh, what it basically does is that when two per person, this is on the same IP address on this network here at uh, this conference. So when there are two people on the same network, it will get automatically connected. So if you open web drop dot space uh, on the Wi-Fi connection, uh, this Wi-Fi connection, then you will be also listed in this device here. So what happens is that this runs entirely on the browser itself. There is no backend. It's entirely a pure Vue.js app, but the peer to peer connections happen using the browser itself. There is no backend involved. Okay, so that's basically what this library is used use for. Okay, let, I will just do a small data collection here. I won't be sharing it to third parties, but I'm just gonna do a small data collection here. How many of you have used torrents here? Just please raise your hand. Okay, that is more than I expected. Okay, so I think the present generation is still using torrents, that's good, that's good. Okay, have you used torrents in the last month? 
Oh, wow. OK, that is a really good uh, number. I actually expected less, but good. It's good to know that torrents are still existing in the era of Netflix. OK, fine. OK, uh, so have you used internet in, uh, during the years 2010 to 2012? Damn, OK. Good. So I think this is the perfect audience for this talk. OK, so what is WebTorrent? WebTorrent is a, basically it, the original goal was to bring torrents on the web. So it's basically a torrent client. And the uh, main feature I think po most people like is that it, you can directly stream videos as it downloads. Because you know, that's a very useful feature. OK, so you can use download or stream torrent in the browser itself without any much uh, uh, effort involved. So I can just directly show WebTorrent here. Torrent. There you go. So you can just download. Uh, an example I think would be, okay, let's download a torrent. Don't worry, it's free torrents. Magnet link is there, so I can just copy the magnet link and I just paste it. Wait. Has a nice animation sound. So Big Bug Bunny is getting downloaded here. I, I'm getting 4 PS, 10 PS, and I can just directly stream the movie instantly without having to wait for it to download entirely. So this is an open, so you can see how fast it is. You can see the, the red bar on the bottom. It's down, well, you can see the bottom, right? Why is it getting discounted? <laughs> I didn't do anything. Okay. Every time you come up here and it just works, okay. <laughs> Uh, so you can see the file is already downloaded. The internet connection is good, and the torrents are not blocked here. That's the main thing. So trackers are still active, so it's possible to download this movie. Very instant, like 10 minute movie, done in, I don't know, 30 seconds. And, the, and it is directly seeding the pop. So people are still watching Big Bug Bunny. It's an amazing thing. People, <laughs> it's getting seeded as well. OK. No, it's not getting seeded. This is just the PS number. So this is basically what WebTorrent, the software is. It's actually to download torrents. OK. Now, the next part, I will, oh, sorry, I will just show the demo. Okay, so how does BitTorrent work? So WebTorrent is like the browser version. The original protocol is called BitTorrent. It started, I think, in 2002, 2003. So what happens is that we, we need to share large files. So if you can know, 2002, 2003, internet is not very good. So you, if you need to share large files, you can directly um, share between people. You need to have host it on a central server, which needs a good upload speed. And then you, have, you need to have a good download speed as well to download the things from that server. So what is easier is that if you already have the file on your system, it's better to directly send the file from your computer to another computer without a central server involved in between. That is the most efficient way to share files. So BitTorrent protocol was created. So how it works is that there is a thing called Tracker. And Tracker is like a central place where the peers are known. So if a person wants to download a particular file, then all, all these clients would cl connect to these trackers and say, I need this particular file. Do you know other pe pe people who have these files? And they will just download together so that the file can be shared between. So if a file gets shared to another person, then that person can also upload the file again to other people. So anyway, it will just continue on and on. OK, so BitTorrent by default is using TCP UDP as the way to connect between peers, trackers. Uh, so that's how communication happens between in the BitTorrent protocol. But can you do peer-to-peer -peer in the browser, uh, in the web browser? Yes, with WebRTC implementing in browsers around the time of 2012, 2013, we are now able to do peer-to-peer -peer communication in the browser itself. So the original proposal was from Google. Chrome was getting popular at that time. So Google Chrome was actually uh, trying to do peer-to-peer. -peer, uh, and there, so at Google IO 2012, the original call was that to bring real-time communication to open web platform uh, in the current sense of Google. OK, so you are, uh, this is the why that I asked this question, is that do you remember in 2010, 2012, when we had to do video calls, voice calls in the browser, we had to download this software called Google Talk plugin. How many of you remember that? OK, that's good. So Google, Google Talk was a software uh, before Google Hangouts or Google Meet. There was this thing called Google Talk. It was a desktop software, and that's how people used to communicate. It's like the Facebook Messenger of 2010. And uh, this software was discontinued, but if you wanted to do audio video calls, you need to download this Google Talk plugin, and that you put a place, and every browser would be able to use that plugin to make video calls. But not anymore. Uh, we don't need this plugin thing anymore, because after WebRTC got implemented in most of the browsers, you can directly make video voice calls. That's how Google Meet works. That's how every video call thing works. Even Zoom, I think when you do the browser thing, everything is using WebRTC for this communication. So why do we need to do this is because video calls are like very high bandwidth. Even if you have an intermediate server, it's not going to be efficient. It's better to directly stream it to the person who is involved in that call. So that's why we, it's better to have 
Am I talking too fast? I'm not sure. Uh, that, is, that is why we need peer-to-peer -peer communication. So that is the original goal of Google in bringing the WebRTC into the browser. Now, I, I can talk one more thing that I uh, got from Feroz talk. That the original intention of Google was video voice calls only. But people, hackers, community was like, not just limited to that, that channel, but we can also have a data channel. Data channel as in not just streaming binary files, but the stream text messages as well be beautiful. So the community also proposed that solution, proposed that thing, and that is what, that got accepted, and that's why we got data channels. And it is only because we got data channels we got WebTorrent on the browser itself. So because of that, we get, we can uh, do WebTorrent on the browser. And now let's see, BitTorrent is TCP UDP, and the browser is using okay. So WebRTC is the technology that was implemented in the browsers to do this peer-to-peer -peer communication. But BitTorrent can't communicate. We can't connect to BitTorrent clients because they are using TCP UDP. We can't communicate with WebRTC to them. That is not possible. We can't communicate. We can directly make TCP connections to BitTorrent. But wait. It, is po it might be possible browsers can do this in uh, at least five, 10 years. There is a proposal by Google Chrome, uh, Chrome people, Googlers, to do this, to directly make TCP connections from JavaScript in the browser itself. And if it is that possible, then WebTorrent can get better as well. So we can directly make TCP connections to people and that uh, uh, other peers, and we can just uh, stream as well. So how does WebTorrent solve this problem? If you can't communicate with, with the clients on the other Pidora protocol, how can we solve this problem? So the problem was solved by having this thing called hybrid clients in between. So hybrid client is like, so this torrent client that I just showed, WebTorrent, right? Okay, WebTorrent. So WebTorrent, so this is a hybrid client. This is running on the desktop, and it can communicate to both TCP UDP wire to the native BitTorrent protocol native clients. It can also talk to the browser, who is also using WebRTC. So it's like a kind of acting like a bridge in between. So if I copy this magnet link, did I copy it? Yeah. So if I copy this magnet link and go to this website called instant.io, no, I think BitTorrent is right. BitTorrent. So this is a browser, a torrent client running on the browser itself, BitTorrent.xyz. I can just paste the magnet link here. When I click download, it will get, it will do the same thing. It will download the torrent browser. Okay, it's already downloaded. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we can directly download the file in the browser itself. So how is it this getting the WebRTC peers? This is acting as a peer right now. So WebTorrent, the hybrid desktop, is acting as a bridge to get the WebRTC clients to communicate with them. And that is how WebTorrent solved this problem by having this hybrid peers, uh, hybrid clients in between here. Yeah. So WebTorrent desktop is the main hybrid. And if you want to know more about WebTorrent, you can go to this talk. Feroz created the whole project. Feroz, uh, uh, so these slides are also taken from that talk. And you can know more. Feroz had done multiple talks about this, so you can mo know more about WebTorrent by searching for Feroz WebTorrent. OK, so now PTPT. So I would say call this project a project that survived a hackathon, because usually what happens in hackathons is that you make a project, you just dump it after. So that's how usually hackathons happen. So uh, it is very rare. Five minutes only? OK. It is very rare to get uh, uh, a project coming out of hackathon. So this was uh, a created in Hackam Kochi, and it won the hackathon, second winning prize in 2020. Uh, so this was before the lockdown. And uh, OK, so how, the, how did the project happen? So WebTorrent is connecting peers and streaming videos. So we already know that peer-to-peer -peer connection is already happening. So how do we go around that? What if we hijack that connection? Or what if we hijack that wire or channel? We know the communication is happening, right? So why if we hijack that thing and send something else in between? It must be possible, right? It's already happening, so we can just hijack that channel, hijack that communication channel, and just send something else. Good thing about WebTorrent, it is a Sodandra software. I, I, I don't like to use the free word because that is very confusing. Sodandra is the right word. We have uh, Sodandra, it is in our language, but the English people can't use it, but still. Sodandra software, is, is, WebTorrent is a Sodandra software. So we can directly look at the source code and uh, go into it how the channels are working, how the communication is working. But the most better way, I think, would be to just directly hack into the uh, channels. Because in JavaScript, you can actually modify the object, or you can use the object inside, and you can use, use it for purposes it is not meant for. That is the hacky way to do it. The proper way would be to learn the source code, which is too time consuming. So directly just hack into the source code. So this is how you write a JavaScript uh, script to stream WebTorrent video in a web page. You open the WebTorrent client, you just have the info hash. Oh, I should explain info hash, but since I don't have time, uh, I will not be explaining. So what happens is that every torrent has a magnet link, and that magnet link has an info hash. That's how you recognize a torrent by using an info hash. So every torrent will have an info hash. This is uh, MD5 or SHA. I think it's SHA. No, MD5 uh, hash, and that is how you identify a, a torrent. So this is how you write a torrent, uh, uh, stream a torrent file in a JavaScript web page, in a web page using JavaScript. Now I'm going to hack it. So I'm going to, I got the object torrent, and I will get, to have, I will get a list of peers in that peers uh, object, and I will just say, hey, how are you? I'm just going to send it. I'm just going to try it. Just attempt it. And that works. 
Uh, when that bus is then you on the responder side, on the other side of the peer, if the message, we'll be checking it every time when there's data coming in, you'll checking if the data is, hey, how are you? We will send a reply back, fine. So this actually worked actually, but it doesn't work all the time because uh, there might be data in between, so the equality wouldn't work all the time. So I'm not gonna show that. So this is, this is the initial hackathon project that uh, 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 did this. The hack, is, hack worked, uh, won the hackathon. Okay, I have two minutes or more, okay, great. Uh, the hack worked, won the hackathon, and now, the thing is that pandemic happened right after, so the hackathon was on February, the pandemic happened on March, so I, didn't, I had lots of free time because I was in college, so uh, I thought, hey, let's do something, so just make it a library. The original project was to, to make a decentralized proxy to access Wikipedia, so that is the actual project. The project is that, at the time, I think Kashmir had an internet block. I think Kashmir got internet blocked uh, after 370 articles revoked, internet was blocked in Jammu Kashmir. So how do students access internet content? How do students access Wikipedia? That's a question to ask. Like, if there's no particular internet, uh, if the sites are all blocked, then how do you access uh, Wikipedia? That's a good problem to uh, think about. So I was thinking about that and think, I think maybe have a, like a peer-to-peer -peer Wikipedia community, but not an like entire peer-to-peer, -peer, like only the thing that is needed will be completed. So that was the initial goal, uh, but I couldn't really complete that. But that's a problem I think you can uh, think about. When if internet is censored, how do you access Wikipedia? How do you access other sites? How do you make a decentralized proxy? That's a problem to think about. So that's how peer to peer, uh, peer, -to -peer was made. And uh, so at the end of this talk, I realized what WebRTC was, what this uh, thing was. So Feroz has multiple web torrent talks on YouTube, and that gives you an understanding of how things work. So the uh, the way to approach a problem would be to the bottom up approach. The bottom up approach meaning just hack on it and just uh, uh, do modifications and things, see how things work. Or the, I think the top-down approach would be to know the concepts first and then make it. So there's two ways to do things. Okay, so these are the apps that was built with B2PT. It's still there. It works on Firefox only at the moment. Uh, not the moment. Chrome, Google Chrome broke the WebRTC thing in uh, Chrome version 110 in January this year. So it broke as in it, it changed something but it didn't notify anyone. And uh, it, it, these apps all got broke in Google Chrome this January, but I didn't have time to fix it. But I, I think it can fix, but Firefox has no problem. So this will work perfectly on Firefox. Uh, that's a very rare thing, right? It's something working perfectly on Firefox, but not on Chrome. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you can get, go to this GitHub repository. It has more explanations. That's all. Similar, yeah. So I think, uh, do I have time? Okay, I think I will just explain info hash since I already made the document. So I will just explain what web torrent, uh, torrent info hash is. So this is the magnet line that we usually get from a torrent file. So this is the big bug bunny torrent file. This is the magnet line that we get. If you look at the magnet file, you can see that the trackers are mentioned in here, UDP, these trackers are mentioned. And you can see the info hash is right here, D, D8 thing. So how do you make a torrent? So torrent makes it that you need some files to make the torrent file. Right? So let's say big bug bunny is an MP4 file and there's a txt file called thanks.txt. So what happens is that we will hash this file, the contents of this file, and we will get this hash like this, two hashes here. Here, right? So if we know the hash, if we can, this is always reproducible. Every time you re make that content, if that content is the original one, the hash will always be the same. So once you get that two hashes, if there are like thousand files in this particular torrent, we will make it thousand hashes. And these thousand hashes are again combined as a single string, and then not a single string, that's not exactly how the protocol, but I'm saying you can combine that whole hash to make a one single hash. And when you get this one single hash, it means that to reproduce this hash, everything has to be the same. Every file, metadata, description, everything has to be the same so that the output of the final hash would also be the same. So this means that we can just simply share this info hash to people uh, that they, can, they will be able to turn. So when this info hash is received by a torrent client, torrent client would ask the other peers to, if you have this particular info hash, uh, then give me the contents of this particular torrent. So they will be sending the metadata first. The metadata would have the hashes of all the files, the title, description, everything, uh, et cetera, will be there. So then we can hash, recompute that to verify it is the same as the info hash. This means every torrent that you download is 100% verified. The data will be 100% correct. So this is why Linux distros Ubuntu usually recommend you to download via torrent because there is no corruption in between. Data will always be 100% integrated. And if the data is corrupted in between, we can always ask that particular peer, just send this small part where this data was corrupted, just send that file and we can just combine together. And that's the beauty of torrent. It's a distributed, it's best distributed file sharing with authenticity. And that authenticity is re really matters when you share files and things like And I will say one more thing. Uh, uh, torrenting also is kind of doing an archiving. If you're torrenting a film, so the, I had this one experience, a German film, a very rare film. It is not available on the internet, but it was there on torrent. And the seeders were like two, peop two, three people. But if I start downloading it and if I start seeding it, there will be, might be some other person in the world who will be also interested in that film, but they will not be able to get it, right? So then they will be also download this film and I will be seeding that, that to him. 
So then that file is getting archived in multiple devices around the world. So we are downloading it, you are consuming it, you are also archiving it. So that's the best part about uh, torrents. Yeah, so that's all the time I have. So if you want to talk about torrents or decentralized things, I I'll be here. Yeah, that's it.